People in Sonoma County really recognize the resources and that they're at risk. The hard part was just figuring out what to do about it. You need to understand the history of Coho in this watershed. They were so abundant that they were canning fish in this watershed. There was a cannery in the lower portion of the Russian River. By the early 2000s, the fish were at risk of extinction with only a dozen or so wild salmon in the watershed. Literally the last couple handfuls of wild coho salmon in the Dry Creek Valley and this river system. When the 2008 biological opinion came out and both us and our partner Sonoma Water were tasked with the six miles of restoration along the 14 miles of creek. Probably our two biggest challenges, um, the first one being just how to get started, and then the second challenge um, would be real estate. This project is a, a mandate for us, a requirement, but really voluntary and, and optional for every private property owner in the creek. We had to go out to the community here of private property owners in, in the Dry Creek Valley and uh, try to sell this project. We knew it would take time to build up trust with the private landowners, but we also didn't have a lot of time with the coho in rapid decline. We were looking for some folks to step up and take the lead, uh, serve as a demonstration project, is what we actually called the first mile of habitat restoration, to show other owners in the valley how this work could be conducted. Dry Creek Vineyard was the first to step up, which we started more than 10 years ago, it has just flourished and it's really been fantastic. Actually, the way that we were first contacted by Dry Creek Vineyard and started working with them was out of concern that the owner, uh, Don Wallace, had for uh, an area of erosion along the stream. He had seen the stream change over time and he was concerned uh, that this one area was kind of failing and asked if there's some way that we could both improve the habitat conditions on the creek and address this problematic area on his property, and we jumped at that opportunity. I said, listen, if you want to do this project with good intentions and, and work together to develop a project that's good for everybody, I'm all in, and I will do anything I can with my neighbors. You know, I'll sleep on their porch if I have to to get them involved in this thing. Ten property owners in that one mile of the creek banded together and, and allowed us to negotiate with them to build uh, the first mile of work and were able to create really an incredible project that added all kinds of wood and vegetation in what's called bioengineering, a way of securing this eroding part of the stream and providing a tremendous amount of fish habitat and the result is successful to this day. Uh, when I think of Dry Creek, I think of sitting in the back barns with the landowners that were going to be absolutely critical of the success of this project. I also think of being back in the Pentagon and working with our elected officials that are trying to help us secure the funding to make these projects happen. These are multi-million dollar projects. Each mile is about 10 to 12 million dollars of restoration. There will always be naysayers and there will always be people that say, oh, was the they, did, they spent too much money, they did it for the wrong reason. I really look at this project as a huge, like a blueprint, if you will, of how the government and the public and all these special interest groups can work together to come up with a better solution that serves everybody. We asked for an easement, a permanent easement, from these property owners just over the areas of the creek where we're doing the restoration. So the areas where they have their wineries are, are not really our interests, we're, we really care about the riparian area. I'm very pleased with the agreement. I mean, we've all went through a number of renditions of easement agreements and legal counsels going back and forth. It was lovely reading, I believe, all 900 and some odd pages of it. Gallo has a lot of properties uh, in Sonoma County. They have one piece of land that's just below Warm Springs Dam that offered a fantastic opportunity to allow the stream to spread out into some of the floodplain areas surrounding the stream, and we're able to build these incredible environments for uh, the young co salmon and steelhead that have inlets to the main channel of the creek and allow fish to come and go from the side channel to the main channel, and they ended up with an incredible project.
what I felt was an opportunity to bring ag and private landowners and both state and federal agencies together along with municipalities was an opportunity instead of legally fighting these battles, let's all get together, work together and do something right. Now that we've made these big improvements, we're actually stocking those fish directly into these habitat restoration areas. And so fish are stocked oftentimes many months before they'll need to leave the Russian River to the ocean so they can acclimate to those conditions and hopefully return and spawn naturally in the creek near these places where they were released when they were young. So we started doing restoration planning in Dry Creek in 2008. It's now 2020, uh, after 12 years of planning and three miles of habitat construction, we're really about midway through the project. And we have another 40 or so owners that we're negotiating with right now to give us the rights to do this work. So here at Truett Hurst, it was kind of high and dry, just a big meadow really, that didn't have any flow in it in the summertime. We, we excavated that area down 10 or 12 feet to make it connect with the existing stream and encourage the stream to flow starting here about a mile, meandering back and forth across the valley to create what's really sort of a small stream next to the larger stream that these young fish really depend on. We were on board with the Sonoma Water Salmon Enhancement Project really quickly. We also wanted to be involved because our visitor area goes right up to the creek and it needed to look nice. Our primary concern was that it was gonna look like a construction site, but little did we know how nature was gonna take over and jump right in and fill in the entire riparian area within a year. It's really comforting for me to know that Sonoma Water is gonna stand by this project long into the future. It's a big restoration effort that involved not just Druid Hurst, but uh, many of the property owners downstream from here. And it's become an incredible place for the public to come to the creek, enjoy wine at, at Druid Hurst Winery, and observe some of these restoration projects. Druid Hurst does a fantastic job of championing this restoration work. They even hand out polarized glasses to folks, which uh, cuts down some of the glare on the water so that you can see fish spawning in the stream. So as an organic and biodynamic farmer, I really appreciate the fact that we've got a creek in our backyard, knowing that it's uh, constantly the conduit for bringing in life energy throughout, throughout the day and throughout the seasons for not only our farm, but also for Sonoma County. It's a beautiful area to be in, and it's rich with resources, and to be able to be part of protecting that resource, improving the habitat that those, those uh, species live in, and improving the population numbers, that's, that's really something to be proud of being engaged in.